I'd like to welcome everybody here this evening for our, our committee meeting for the school redistricting process. We appreciate you coming out here. We're happy to see the rain. I know it's kind of um, unusual, but we're glad to have it. We need it desperately, so everybody's lawn and the schools need it too for the playgrounds and the landscaping and everything else, so we're blessed to get that tonight. But thank you all for being here. If you are a committee member, please sign in. Also, if you are a committee member, we would like you to sit on this side of the <laughs> ribbon because this is a committee meeting, so everybody here is an observer. Not, that's on this side is an observer. It's, it's a participation meeting for the committee only. So we're asking that if you're not sitting on that side, that you just be a casual observer, and I'm sitting on this side as well because it's supposed to be a committee meeting, and we're here just to observe. So we appreciate those of you that are on this side to uh, work with us on that. This is going to be a, a, an update on the process and a progress report on the data ga gathering that's going on for this, for this redistricting process. And at this point in time, I know they'll talk further about the next, the next meeting and, and where the schedule is headed in terms of timeline and so forth. So at this point, I'll introduce Mr. Sam Sweat, the chairman of the committee, and then he will introduce uh, Mr. Kerry, who I think most of you have met already anyway. Remember, if you just walked in before you leave today, to please sign in so we have a record of you being here, okay? Thank you, Dr. Dakotas. I would like to give you a few updates. First of all, our next meeting will be two weeks from tonight. And I, I looked at my calendar, I believe that's August 30th from 7 to 9. And we will be in room 2, not in here. And that's when we will just meet as a committee, okay? Uh, Mr. Campbell and myself and Ms. Watson, we will be here to run that meeting and, and that will be a nuts and bolts type meeting where we get down and, and we do um, some of the work that we need to get done because our target date to have everything completed by, remember our target date is the November board meeting. So tonight's meeting kicks off meetings that we're going to have probably every two to three weeks. We're going we're to hit the ground running now after tonight. And we've been anxiously awaiting uh, this, this time. I'm very excited, I'm very enthused, and I think the process is going to be a good process. Let me tell you a little bit about how we got to this point. If you all will remember, last fall we did the middle school, high school redistricting process. Mr. Campbell and Mr. Sweat took on that job. And it was a job. And we did the very <coughs> best job that we could do. We felt very good about what we did. There were a lot of citizens that did not feel good about the job we did. And afterwards, we listened to their concerns. From listening to some of the citizens' concerns, they gave me a website about a gentleman named Kelly Carey, who had been doing planning for school districts for some 35 years, having worked with over 300 school districts. And so I called him on the phone and we talked and we talked about software that I was interested in obtaining. And he said, Sam, you can do all the software work you want to, but that's really not what it's all about. It's all about having a citizen group, a committee, go through a data-driven process because they are the taxpayers. They should be included in the process of the rezoning of the lines because it affects their kids. So we embarked on a totally new and different process. With the support of the superintendent and the board, we embarked on a new process. And it has been a new and different process. And we are excited. I want to tell you a little bit about Mr. Carey. I've told you about his experience. I'm proud to say that his education has been in the state of Georgia. He graduated with his Bachelor of Arts degree from Augusta College, and that's where I obtained my master's degree. It's a very small but very good college. He got two degrees from Georgia Tech. He got his, his uh, civil engineering degree as well as his city planning degree. And then he went to Emory to get his law degree. And uh, he's also done some work with Harvard uh, up on the, on the East Coast. So he, he's well-educated, but he's a Georgia boy. 
and, and we're, we're proud of that because he's been all over the country working with school districts and we're happy to obtain his services. And with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Carey. <coughs> Thank you all. <laughs> when I started out doing this about 35 years ago, uh, unlike your local paper reports, I was not silver haired and silver tongued. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud to say that we're, we're marching ahead with due speed. Um, what folks don't often understand is that the actual plan that comes out of this kind of process is really the tip of the iceberg. 90% of it is hard work in the background. Uh, we're getting geared up to involve you with the data that you need, and I'll explain how we're going to do that. Um, for, for you who don't recall, I always hark back to our triangle programs, demographics, and facilities. You may recall we were talking about the strong relationship among these things, that uh, you do something to one, it affects the others. So when you talk about redistricting, if you're just talking about redistricting, you're ignoring the other two parts of the triangle. Because anything you do as far as reassignment affects facilities, utilization, facilities needs, and consequent ability to house programs. And as part of looking at this, we were also incorporating considerations of the strategic plan of the school district programs. So it isn't just going out there and saying, hmm, let's go down this street, and these people won't mind, <laughs> and these people will. That's not how it works, not, not the way we do it. It's got to be driven by planning assumptions that make sense and that are understood. It isn't driven by politics, special favors, or ideas about how some people would like better represent themselves than others. It should be that way. We're early on now because this is, these are the steps. Assembling the basic data, interpreting the data to outline needs and objectives, uh, I'm not going to stand here and tell you what your needs and objectives are. I have no way of knowing until we've got this data and we can start looking at it. Because the data, the, paper, the, the data is going to say things to us about where growth is occurring, where decline is occurring, because it happens in all school districts. So we're way up here. We're just about to get into this one. And you might say, well, where have you been with this? Well, we've been busy. <laughs> what we've done is, uh, uh, this is a district-wide map, but uh, we're showing the uh, elementary zones in this one and what we call NPUs, Neighborhood Planning Units. It's just a term of art that we use. Uh, basically, it's trying to break up a school zone into subsections. Um, we do it from just a demographic view. That is, that's obviously a little cluster there, you know, intense development, and we're doing it elsewhere. And maybe as we go along, we might want to break it up some more. It's just a point of departure. But what we've done with this, by breaking it up, is we can recognize the different demographic trends within an existing school zone. Because after all, if you're going to, I'm not going to pick on these guys, but if you ran a line through here and took that NPU out, put it over here, it's going to change the growth dynamic of this school. That's pretty obvious. But unless you've got the data behind that, you don't know what it is. So we do. We have completed <coughs> five-year enrollment projections for the entire school district by grade at each school. 